Welcome to Nastasia's documentary of cold capping on four rounds of TC for breast cancer spread three weeks apart using polar cold caps. I'm making this documentary for you because cold capping is a relatively new technology and there's not a lot of resources out there. So I hope that I can help you if you're thinking about cold capping and you have some questions that go along with the process. When I got my diagnosis, for sure the most traumatic thing was the fact that I was going to lose my hair and the chance that there would be permanent hair loss with alopecia. I'm a young, fit individual, and being diagnosed with breast cancer was not only a shock, but it was extremely saddening to me for the thought about losing my hair. So as I started to research cold capping, I found that there was an alternative option to losing my hair, and my husband and I were willing to take on the journey of cold capping throughout treatment to do our best to see if we could save my hair. Now, as you can see, I have a ton of thick, long, curly, dark Greek hair, and I straighten it when I'm getting ready to go out. So this was a little bit unknown if it was going to work for me or not, but we were willing to take the chance to try because to me, not trying was not fighting. And we were going to give this fight 110%. So this photo right here was taken shortly before I had my mastectomy and before I started my treatment. And with thick, long hair, it can become really complicated to cold cap. I would highly suggest if you have long hair to consider cutting it short to make the process and the intricacies of cold capping a little bit easier on you and whoever's going to be helping you. So my first stop was to the salon to get my hair chopped off. It was really scary and traumatic, but after I did it, I actually ended up loving my short haircut, which I got to enjoy for about six weeks before I started my chemotherapy. The reason you want to cut your hair short is it makes it less easy to tangle and to get complicated when you're washing your hair during cold capping. And also for when you're shedding, it makes it less like less chances for it to get balled up in a knot and for you to have big problems. I also took a stop to the wig shop and tried on some ridiculous wigs, but I decided to pass because I wanted to put all of my eggs in the basket that my cold capping was going to work. So the next steps were to make sure that I transitioned my shampoo and conditioner to a pH balanced shampoo and conditioner at least two weeks prior to starting cold capping and also to go get my roots touched up well in advance. They suggest at least two weeks or more if you're going to color your hair so your root doesn't get compromised and doesn't become delicate. So I also did that prior to my surgery. So I was all set to go and prepared and ready to cold cap. I choose a brand called Polar Cold Caps, which are manual cold caps. Some hospitals have these huge machines that you can use as well, which is really awesome if your hospital offers that, which are called... I don't know what they're called, but they're machines versus manual cold caps. If you're going to manually be cold capping, you'll also have to get dry ice from a dry ice provider the night before or the morning of each cold cap session because the caps have to be kept at a really freezing degree that ice will not do and your freezer won't work. Once you get to the hospital, the first thing you'll do is put on these period pads onto your head. It's super attractive, but that prevents your skin from getting frostbite and the only thing you want exposed is your actual hair. For me, I had two people helping me, which is likely what it's going to take. And we administer the caps all together. You can see the people holding the caps are usually wearing gloves because the caps are so cold, it'll burn their skin and your skin as well. It's pretty tricky to learn how to get these caps on, which is why I do suggest having two people. You can see this is the first time that we were administering the cap and we all were figuring out what we were doing to get it around my head really, really snug and tight and in the right position. The reason two people is important is because when you put the cap on, you have about one minute to get the cap on and then it needs to be placed so the cooling doesn't release from the cold cap. After that, then the people helping you will take the cap that you just used and put it back into the cooler that you have at the hospital, rotate it to the bottom, and you're going to switch these caps every 30 minutes. People make a lot of stories about how freezing it is. I would say for me, it wasn't horrible and it totally wasn't that bad. 
You can see these photos here are after my first cold capping session. If you were not to cold cap, you would be completely bald on certain chemotherapies around day 17 to 22. This is when my hair first started shedding and then started to become thicker and thicker sheds during the time where I should have been bald. It's really common and normal to shed and this by far was the lead up to the worst shed that I had the entire time, which again, I would have been bald at this time. So I had about five days of really heavy shedding. This right here being the worst of all. This came out all at once on one morning after I had washed my hair and it was so traumatic. So part of cold capping is that you're going to lose hair. It's a normal part of the process and it is something that is very, very hard to undergo, but you need to smile about it and joke about it. And no matter how much hair keeps falling out, it is completely insane that you still have hair left. So what you're seeing right here is after my massive shedding of about five days with that big shed that you just saw after my first chemotherapy, it is a lot of hair loss, but you can see that I still have a ton of hair on my head where I would have been bald at this point. And so for me, I was still really happy with the results. And I was also secretly praying that it would stop. It didn't stop, but it definitely slowed down. The amount of shedding that I had after the first chemotherapy around day 19 to 22 never happened again during my cold capping, and it was by far the worst that happened the entire process. Now, when I shed, I never shed completely in one spot. It's not like a big chunk of hair came out and I became bald all of a sudden on one whole section. The shedding takes its time. It's an even shed that just consistently happens every morning and every evening. And it does end up potentially creating some bald spots, but not no chunks ever just came out all at once. And you can see right here, this is an example of what might come out in the morning and what might come out at night pretty consistently for me throughout the shedding, but this is still what I look like from the outside. Even with all this hair falling out, nobody would know that I was under chemotherapy treatment during the time that I was. This photo coming up right here was taken right before my second chemotherapy on a night out on the town. When you are handling your hair during treatment and during cold capping, you have to be really gentle. You can't use any hot tools, no hair blow dryers, no flat irons, no curling irons, no dry shampoo, no mousse. Nothing can touch the root of your hair. You have to be really, really gentle when brushing out your hair. So using a wide tooth comb or after this, honestly, I just started using my fingers because this was even a lot of pressure on my hair. I did save my hair all the way until I filled up the Ziploc bag and then I gave up and started throwing it in the toilet. So right here is after I had completed two rounds of TC on day 31 and you can see the parting of my hair when you look at it closely is a significant loss but as I continued to go about my life and my uh, day, nobody would ever know that I, again, was under chemotherapy. So there were some spots that started balding, some thicker spots that started shedding, and the sheds just continuously stayed about this amount in the morning and the evening. But remember, I have a lot of hair and it's super thick, so those might look a little overwhelming. But from the outside, this is still how I was able to cover it up. When you're working with your hair during cold capping, you can't put it up in tight buns. You should use a silk scrunchie or a tiny little clip to be really gentle on your hair. I made it through the holidays of Christmas and New Year's Eve looking completely normal. For my bald spots, I started to use this a powder called Topic to cover up some of the areas that were a little bit darker and it worked great. Now let's talk about how you're going to wash your hair. Now I understand not everybody has a willing husband or a shower like this, but the point is you're going to have to be really gentle when you're working with your hair and not a lot of people understand this when they sign up for cold capping. So what you can see my husband doing here is spraying my hair with a water bottle and we might have gone a little bit above and beyond, but you're not supposed to have a lot of 
pressure coming down on your hair because that can compromise the follicle. So we used a spray bottle. It worked really well. You need to use cool or cold water because hot water can stimulate the hair follicle and also make it fall out. We got on a rhythm that worked really, really well for me of washing my hair every five days. There's some controversy around washing it too much or washing it too little. I found if I left my hair for a whole week, it got so dirty I couldn't clean it. And if I washed it too much, then it's a lot of shedding when you wash your hair. So you don't want to overdo it. So first step, we would take the spray bottle and dampen my hair. I would part my hair so he could get all of these sections wet and make sure that it was really, really moist for us to then be able to do our shampoos. We did two different types of rinses each time we wash my hair. First off, I took apple cider vinegar, the kind you buy at the store, one fourth cup mixed with one cup of water. And we started the first round after we wet my hair with apple cider vinegar rinse. We would put it in my hair, let it sit for about five minutes as we gently massaged it using the palms of my hands and the pads of my finger in order to get the apple cider vinegar really, really well in there. Now, the reason we use apple cider vinegar, number one, a lot of girls on the cold capping Facebook group suggested it, and you can't see it here quite yet, but I'm walking you through so you get all the information. Um, Use apple cider vinegar, and it is the most natural pH balance. Your hair and your scalp does this really disgusting thing during chemo where it creates buildup. And that buildup needs to get cleaned out. Otherwise, you're going to run the risk that your hair follicle gets stuck with a bunch of gunk and dirt and goo inside. And that could promote even worse hair loss. So it's really important that you get your hair really, really clean throughout this process. The second pH balance shampoo that we used was a brand called T-Cell by Neutrogena. It's another pH balance clarifying shampoo, and I would put it in my squeegee bottle and dilute it with some water. And again, that will be up to you, but I found that it was really hard to get the shampoo rinsed out, so just be careful that you're not overdoing it. Now, these squeegee bottles are like the bottles your hairdresser uses to put your toner in your hair, and this was a game changer for us. When you're washing your hair, you can't take your hair and ball it up and scrub your head like you're used to scrubbing when you normally wash it. Otherwise, when you get out from the shower, you are going to have a disaster knotted mess that you won't be able to back out. So what you can see here is he's administering the shampoo layer by layer, and we're gently parting my hair. And after he gets that into the roots, I take the pads of my hand and I gently rub it in to get my scalp clean. So just be careful that you're not taking your hair and knotting it all together. And you try to keep your hair as straight as possible throughout this whole process and gently, gently just Get that shampoo in there as deep as you can. It took us a while to figure this out. I never did stay under the shower head. I'm sure you can. I would just keep your head back. Another tip is to make sure that you don't flip your hair forward if you're doing this in the sink. Because when you go to take your hair back, again, you have a chance of a big knotted mess. And the reason your hair gets knotted, which I didn't understand until I started cold capping, your hair is so fragile that you're going to lose strands during your wash. And you can see me kind of shaking my hand off and some maybe some strands falling out of the back. What gets tangled in your hair is actually the loose hairs that are falling out getting tangled in with the hairs that are staying on your head. And so if you're overly aggressive or you start moving your hair in a direction other than up and down, those loose hairs then get tangled into your hair. So this is where you're going to see people talking about being really gentle during your wash and being really careful during your wash. Another tip for you during your cold capping, after you're done washing, never sleep on a 
wet head. So I did that and it was a big mistake. So take my word, make sure your hair is completely dry. And again, you can use a hair blow dryer on cool, but I would be really, really careful with that. And if you do do that, and otherwise, make sure that your hair is completely dry. Also, it's suggested not to brush your hair while it's wet. Your hair while it's wet is the most compromised position and the weakest it can be. So it's best to just let it air dry or dry on cool with a hair dryer and not really mess with it while it's wet. You'll want to sleep on a silk pillowcase. A silk pillowcase allows your hair to have a really soft surface where it can um, not get pulled by the cotton. And then you can see right here, we took a pinch pitcher for the final rinse. And this is, um, I use cold water because I'm an overachiever. And my husband would just pour it down and we would make sure that we got all of the apple cider vinegar and all of the shampoo really well rinsed out. Now, when it comes to conditioner, which you'll watch me do here in a moment, you can only condition the bottom part of your hair. And the reason is you don't want any part of the follicle getting compromised with debris or with product. And you want the entire root of your hair to be fully, fully clarified and fully clean. So we did really, really intense rinsing here to make sure that all of the shampoo and the conditioner was removed and that we were good to go with the wash. For those of you wondering about cold capping and the success rate, it really is dependent on your hair type, your treatment type, and I honestly feel like it's luck of the draw. So for me, you'll see as I take you through the timeline, I would say that my cold capping was successful because I made it through my treatment feeling very normal, but also uh, by the end, I still ended up unfortunately in a wig and I did everything the right way, if not more than the right way. The way that we're washing my hair, I would say is overachieving. And so, Ultimately, you're kind of left up to chance on how it ends up working for you. You can see right here, I'm administering the conditioner. We diluted a tiny bit and then I just put it on the edge of my hair, not on my root. And the next benefit with cold capping is a, some of these chemotherapies can cause alopecia, which is permanent hair loss. And cold capping helps you reduce that risk to pretty much zero. And after you're done capping, your hair typically is reportedly comes back really thick and comes back really, really fast. So it helps promote hair growth by freezing the follicle of the hair and letting less of that treatment reach the root of your hair. So therefore, you're either limiting hair loss or you're limiting the amount of damage that the chemotherapy permanently is doing to the root of your hair. And this is our final rinse. And after this, we're going to damp dry my hair with a t-shirt, no hair turbans, no rough drying with your hair. Remember, you just need to be super gentle with everything that you're doing. And you would repeat this one to two times a week. And I just pat dry the ends of my hair and let it air dry. And remember, just don't sleep on it wet and avoid putting any uh, pressure on your hair while it's wet, such as combing or tying it down. This next photo that's coming up is at in the middle of my two second chemotherapy. You can see that I am losing a lot of hair and it is pretty sparse and thin. And here are all of the side angle views of day 42 and the third chemo was just coming up here in a couple of days. But as you can see from the outside, it's still very cover upable and I was still wearing it in this kind of high clip and low pony clip and nobody would know what was going on. But there were sections that were balding and there definitely was this little um, old man balding starting in the back. So walking into my third chemo, my hair was much thinner. So I used this little skull cap because it was a little bit colder and I did have a few spots on my head in the previous 
chemotherapies that had like a tiny little bit of a burn, you might get some frostbite on your head where your hair is thin. All that happens is it turns really dark and then it starts flaking off and then you're okay. If you have severe burning, then you need to be checking your temperature gun with your cold cap throughout the day. So this is our third treatment and our capping. And when you cap, you're going to need to cap an hour before and three to five hours after your treatment. Following my third treatment, I was now moving to these cute little bandanas because the side of my hair was thinning pretty significantly. But again, they're super cute and in style. I got them all on Amazon and you would never know what I was going through. And we did make a stop to the wig shop because I was getting pretty paranoid that I was going to be losing all my hair overnight, which again didn't happen. But I got two cute wigs and the lady was awesome and it's nothing to fear. So here I am the night before my final chemo and this is reality of my new mohawk situation on the sides and the continued thinning towards the front and the back. So you'll see that it was a really slow progression. There there was a time where I thought I was going to take a bath and all of my hair was going to fall out into the shower, but that never happened. It was just a slow, steady progression until my final chemo number four, where I am flipping the bird to cancer and I am finally done. And your side effects still continue after chemo number four. So you're going to see that it continues to shed and get thinner. So as I was saying earlier, the commitment of cold capping is an entire day's work for you and whoever is helping you. In addition to getting the dry ice and getting your cooler packed. So we would start at about 5 a.m. for a 9 9 9 30 chemo and we would be done at about 5 p.m each time so these are my final results i did start transitioning to some head wraps because my hair was getting really thin and not logical in any kind of a pattern that i could rock and i happily started to embrace this look and this is after my final chemo where my hair is still shedding because the side effects keep going for weeks after and here is day 87 out of what I call 85, my full cycle finish three days, a couple days past that last chemo with my final kind of hair report, although my hair is still shedding a little bit right now. So I've transitioned to hats and I've transitioned to my really cute wigs. Overall, I'm so happy I cold capped. I kept a lot of normalcy during treatment. I'm excited to see how my hair grows back, but I do want you to know it's a massive commitment and it's something that you need to be really sure that you want to sign up for and that it's important enough to you in order to weather the storm. So I hope this helped and happy cold capping to everybody embracing the journey.